Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, friends. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Our number 844-236-6010. If you have questions, comments, success stories you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls in our next segment. And at the bottom of the hour, we're going to talk to Faye Mandel, author of Self-Empowerment Toward a New Way of Living. It's a new model. It's a model that she's developed in self-empowerment. It involves consciousness and awareness. We'll talk to Faye Mandel. She's been on the program before, and I've been reading her book now for many years. It's a tiny little book, maybe 100 pages or so, but I've been reading it for 15 years, and I get new stuff from it every time I pick it up. It's called Self-Empowerment Toward a New Way of Living. Faye Faye Mandel will be with us at the bottom of the hour. We'll get your calls next segment. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase Longevity products, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Even better, if you'd like to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time fee, you can be in business for yourself. Call 866-735-2470 for more information or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All right, our number today, 442 We'll get your calls in our next segment and talk to Faye Mandel, author of the book Self-Empowerment at the bottom of the hour. I want to continue talking about butyric acid, the short-chain fatty acid that is good for so many different things, that has so many different health benefits, that has so much health upside. It's derived from fiber. It is derived actually from the reaction between fiber and bacteria that live in the microbiome. Fiber acts as a pre- Biotic to support probiotics. Prebiotics are food for bacteria, food for the microbiome. And in return for being fed by us, by fiber, the microbiome secretes this amazing short-chain fatty acid, butyric acid, that is good for so many different things. Last program, we talked about eating your veggies first. I didn't say this, but I'll say it now. Eating fermented veggies first. If you eat fermented veggies first, you'll get enzymes in addition to fiber, in addition to bacteria. So if you can, if you, if you like sauerkraut, start your meals off with sauerkraut. Start your meals off with fermented beets. Start your meals off with fermented veggies. Get a book called The Art of Fermentation. And you, can, uh, you can see how easy it is to make your own fermented veggies. In addition to the enzymes, in addition to the bacteria, in addition to the fiber, of course, you're going to get phytonutrients. You're going to get flavonoids and carotenes and phytosterols. Wonderful micronutrients. This is my big problem with the carnivore diet. My friend Rob yesterday texted me about how the Inuit Eskimos don't eat a lot of veggies. They, don't, they, they basically exist on carnivore food. They don't get fiber. It's actually not true. They do, they do have veggies, just not a lot, and they do get fiber, just not a lot. Nonetheless, there is the idea that the Inuit and certain cultures around the world are only carnivores, and they do just fine. Maybe that's true. That's, maybe it's true that you don't need to have Uh, phytosterols, and you don't need phytonutrients, and you don't need the extra enzymes and fiber that are provided by fermented veggies and regular veggies. That's possibly true, but what is undeniable is that these things are beneficial. It's undeniable that phytonutrients have benefits, and if you don't eat a lot of veggies, you're not going to get those phytonutrients. So yeah, maybe you can survive without them. That's not, you know, that's fine, but that's not the point. The point is, is you're depriving yourself of some incredibly powerful natural, relatively benign, that is relatively non-toxic, pretty much completely non-toxic in the concentrations they come in, nutritional value, particularly when these, uh, when these veggies are fresh. To the degree that your veggies are cooked, on the other hand, enzymes, which are very unstable, break down and become less valuable. To the degree that you process your vegetables, that's the degree that you're going to get, uh, you're going to start to lose nutritional value. These enzymes, by the way, these plant enzymes, these enzymes that you get from vegetables, especially fermented vegetables, can be used to improve the processing in the human digestive tract. You can eat digestive enzymes. Our bodies make digestive enzymes, of course, but you can eat digestive enzymes. You can get foods that contain digestive enzymes. Now, why would we deprive ourselves of plant-derived enzymes? Yes, I know that you can survive without vegetation or without vegetables, but why deprive yourself of plant enzymes? That's what I was trying to get Dr. Baker to talk about, and all he would tell us is why you don't need them. And he's right. You don't need them. But you can use them. <laughs> you can benefit from them. That's undeniable. There's four basic types of enzymes that are found 
in fruits and veggies that all have value for improving human and animal digestion. There, there's the proteases. Whenever you hear the word a or the suffix ace at the end of a word, A-S-E, that's the biochemical description of an enzyme. A protease is an enzyme that breaks down protein. Papain, which comes from papaya, Adolf's meat tenderizer is papain, and bromelain, which comes from pineapple, are the classic plant-derived proteases, and almost all digestive enzyme supplements are going to contain one or the other or both. I use these plant-derived proteases in some of my skincare formulations, and topical application of papain and topical application of bromelain can can give uh, can help stimulate exfoliation, stimulate the, the dropping off of dead cells off of the surface and turn on the movement of new cells from the bottom to the top. As new cells rise from the bottom to the top, these cells secrete moisture factors. You can actually increase the uh, concentration of natural moisture factors in your skin by using topical enzymes, topical papain. You can even use topical Adolf's meat tenderizer, which is papain. Of course, you can put straight papaya on your skin. You can put straight pineapple on your skin. You can mash up pineapple and papain and make a paste and apply that to your skin. It might be a little, it might be a little strong if you have sensitive skin, but just do it for a couple seconds if you have to. You can make, you, you can make your own exfoliating toners with papain and bromelain. The stratum cornea, the skin surface, is composed of protein. And in between the dead cells that give the skin its protective barrier, you also have proteins. And by using proteases, protein enzymes, on the surface of the skin, you can dissolve the protein substance that holds dead skin cells in place, and you can dissolve the dead skin cells themselves on the surface and by strategic, you got to be careful here, strategic use of proteases. You don't want to overdo it. Stimulating ingredients are very good for you, but overstimulation is not good. Sometimes we lump overstimulation and stimulation into the same bucket, and we say, oh, it's not good because you're, we confuse overstimulation with stimulation. I'm not buying that. Stimulation of the skin, uh, skin surface, like stimulation of any part of the body, has its benefits, but you got to be strategic and careful. And strategic and careful use of proteases can have a skin smoothing effect. It can have a skin cell stimulating effect. It can have a collagen stimulating effect. And it can improve the overall appearance of the skin as well as the overall health of the skin. And, by the way, topical application of proteases, bromelain, papain, papaya, pineapple, can actually even out your skin pigment and tone for folks who are dealing with melasma, i.e. hyperpigmentation. Although hyperpigmentation, I should say, is not a topical issue, even though it appears topically, and you can improve the appearance using uh, appearance of dark spots by using these topical strategies, but you still have to work on your hormone system if you are hyperpigmenting. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls. Next segment on the Bright Side, Faye Mandel, author of Self-Empowerment, will be with us at the bottom of the hour. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a sec, so hang on if you're on hold. Faye Mandel will be with us at the bottom of the hour. We're going to talk about her book, Self-Empowerment, and we'll get your, call, we'll get your calls here in just a moment. From today, uh, this week's, actually last week's edition of New Scientist Magazine, one of my favorite uh, science magazines. It is a little bit technical, but it's not all that bad. And uh, if you have even just a tiny little bit of scientific, scientific expertise, there are some good articles. It is kind of mainstream. It is sort of orthodox, and they do, uh, they do uh, follow what passes for conventional wisdom, especially when it comes to health issues. One of the uh, more interesting articles in this, uh, in last, I think it's last week's uh, edition of, of uh, New Scientist magazine, How to Give Your Vaccine a Boost. Turns out lifestyle choices around the time of your vaccination can affect your immune response, which I find kind of interesting. Why about, how about if you just make lifestyle modifications and don't get vaccinated? Maybe that's all we need to do is have lifestyle, is modify our lifestyle, make some lifestyle changes. In any case, it turns out, according to this article anyway, if you make lifestyle changes and you get a vaccine and you get, and I'll, I should say experimental vaccine, I keep forgetting to say that, but we shouldn't be calling it a vaccine. We should be calling it an experimental vaccine because that's what it is. It's an experiment. I got a note today from a gal, and I, I was a quick digression here. I was a little bratty. She says to me, um, 
I'm faced with a decision about which COVID vaccine would be the safest for me with Cipro sensitivity. She's got problems with Cipro. Do you have any suggestions or know where I could find more information? Thank you for your help. And so I was a little bratty. I answered, unfortunately, it's difficult to answer your question. As at this point, all COVID vaccines are experimental. As the experiment progresses, it will be easier to assess their safety. Now it's slightly bratty, but, but that's the facts. It's an experimental vaccine, and this is an experiment, and we don't know a lot about it. And if you want to be an experiment, that's fine. But let's make no mistake about it, and let's call it what it is. It's an experimental vaccine. And by the way, I'm going to be on uh, doing a, a Zoom seminar for uh, Vaccine Choice Canada tomorrow at 5 p.m. Send me a, send me a request, ben at, ksco .com, ben at ksco com, if you want a link. So anyway, how to give your vaccine a boost. Lifestyle choices around the time of the vaccination can affect your immune response. Number one, try not to stress. Stress impacts the immune system in a myriad of ways, but one of the things that's going to happen is uh, you're going to get better results from vaccinations if you're not stressed out. Number two, get friendly. Alongside stress, you may want to try to mitigate the effects of isolation. Even in young, healthy people, feelings of loneliness have been associated with lower antibody response to vaccination. Number three, get some sleep. Sleep duration on the two nights before vaccination is the best predictor of immune response several months later. Number four, exercise. 15 minutes of upper body workout can boost the immune response to vaccinations. And four, watch the clock. Men who are vaccinated in the morning exhibited a stronger antibody response to vaccines than men who got their vaccine in the afternoon, although no difference was seen in women. All right, that's from New Scientist magazine, February 13th to uh, February 13th edition. So I guess that would be three weeks ago. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Line's open for you. And we'll, get to, uh, we'll uh, talk to Faye Mandel at the bottom of the hour. Time to the phones. Let's go to Canada. Canada and talk to Curtis. What's going on, Curtis? Good morning. Hey, Ben, long time listener. Nice. Just wanted to, uh, yesterday I tried to call in. I ended up getting Dr. Dahlia, I believe is her name. Dr. Dahlia yesterday? And, yeah, yesterday. Anyways, I brought up the fact that it seems percentage wise, you have a better chance of getting an adverse reaction to the experimental vaccine than you would from having a fatal reaction to, you know, COVID-19 itself. That, that doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> Isn't that ironic, though? I mean... It is, and I, um, she, she knows her stuff as a doctor, but I think she was kind of missing the point that people are looking at it as, what, what is my risk of getting COVID-19, which, in my opinion, uh, in Canada anyway, the flu cases are down 98% this year. So how does that happen in the same year that a disease comes to light that has ex like pretty much every single symptom of the normal flu? How does well, that happen? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, the mainstream answer to that, because they can't dispute the facts. Those are the facts. The mainstream answer is that people are not congregating together and they're wearing masks, et cetera. But that doesn't explain why they get COVID then. You know why so many people get COVID if they're wearing masks and we're locking down, but they're not getting the flu. So your point is is very well taken. Probably has to do with diagnosing things that would would have been diagnosed as a flu last year is now being diagnosed as COVID. And you know there's so much there's so much silliness in here, but it really boils down to this, Curtis. And by the way, who's Dr. Dahlia? Is she, I didn't understand what uh, you she, meant. She's on GCN. So. Oh, she's on after me. She's on after yeah. me. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay, and she's an MD. Uh, I don't know if she's a physician or MD, but she, like, she she made some good points. But um, what were her points? Kind of, what, what were her points? Hang on a second. Hey, hey Jason, is she, she? Did you say she's a medical doctor? Okay, gotcha. Um, go ahead, uh, Curtis. So she's an MD. She's a medical doctor. Uh, and what were her good points? Maybe I'll get her on the program. Maybe I can talk to her. Um, I brought up that the pharmaceutical companies have uh, have zero liability, like as in they can't get sued. Right. And she, her but, you mean the, her point the ones was, who are making the experimental vaccine? They've been. Yeah. They've and been. her point was, uh, companies that prescribe opioids do the same because of the lawsuits. So they want to know they that they're not going to get sued and you know financially lose. But it, she kind of, uh, she kind of glossed over the fact that that's.
still not a good business model. That's a damaging business model for human health. For consumers. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, she's right. Obviously, that's the reason we all know that. That's not rocket science. They want to be protected. Obviously, they want to be protected. But if they're producing a product that's going right into your bloodstream, don't you think that the consumer should be protected? This Dr. Dahlia, that doesn't make sense to me. That sounds like doctor, doctor or medical model. Uh, I'll be careful what I say because I may get Dr. Dahlia in the program. But it doesn't, sound yeah. very, it doesn't sound very nice to the consumer or the patient. I'm going to try and get Dr. Dahlia on. Thank you for telling me about this. All right, but I, yeah. I agree with you 100%. You know, but here's the thing, Curtis. At the end of the day, we should all be able to make our own decisions. If people want to be part of an experiment voluntarily, that's fine. If people are not going to critically think and not going to examine the facts about vac- about experimental vaccination, about COVID, that's their business. Where it becomes problematic is when it becomes mandated, either directly, as it, does, it probably will be in some countries, or indirectly, where they say you can't go places. You know, uh, New York State is now experimenting with a with a passport, with a digital passport. You can't go to Madison Square Garden without okay. that, right? It's already starting. You're not going to be able to fly certain places. You're not going to be able to cruises. And that's where it becomes problematic to me, where you mandate human beings be part of your experiment. And then on top of that, to have doctors say, well, the, the drug company should be protected from, this, from the results of their experiment. Otherwise, they wouldn't be making these things. That's, that doesn't sound very nice. And it certainly doesn't sound very nice for a medical professional to support that, in my humble opinion. But we'll see what doc, – maybe I'll get Dr. Dye on. We'll see what she says. All right. Does that help, Curtis? Yeah. And, and check out um, Vaccine Choice Canada tomorrow. Uh, the Zoom, you know what? The Zoom I'm very call. involved in the in the protest around this COVID and vaccine uh, being mandated. So I do know about Vaccine Choice Canada. So I'll definitely be checking in. With that. Awesome. Thank you, Curtis. Thanks for the call, buddy. Appreciate it. Yes. Okay. Have I, a good day, man. You too, buddy. I want to be clear. If people want the experimental vaccine, that's their business. No problems. Just don't make people do it. Don't force people to be part of an experiment. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Faye Mandel, author of Self-Empowerment, will be with us in our next segment. Don't go away. Back on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time and 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can find longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also news stories, blog posts, interviews, lots of good health information on our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more info. And don't forget to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products, all formulated in my compounding pharmacy for healing wounds and preventing post-surgical scarring and treating various skin health issues, including eczema, acne, and just plain old aging. True Skin Health products are made without preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, vegetable oil, water, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our True Skin Health products, just 100% active and functional ingredients. You can check out our 1,600 plus four and five star reviews at truthreviewed.com. That's truthreviewed with a D, truthreviewed.com. And you can purchase Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, plural, truthtreatments with an S, dot com. All right, I am really stoked to speak to our guest today. Faye Mandel is the author of a book that I have been reading for many years. It's a tiny little book, about 130 pages or so. Uh, but my copy of it is all dog-eared and highlighted and got all kinds, of, all kinds of bookmarks in it because it is just packed, I mean packed, with information. But at the same time, it's super simple. The book is Self-Empowerment, The Gateway to a New Way of Living. And if you understand this book, you will have a major tool in your armamentarium to use whenever anything goes awry in your life. It's about the distinction between thoughts and feelings. If I can, if I can uh, be succinct about it, but we'll have Faye explain a little bit more. It's, a, it's based on what she calls a self-powerment model that teaches people how to come to and stay in the present moment. Please welcome the author of Self-Empowerment and my friend, Faye Mandel, to the bright side. Hello, Faye. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, it's nice to talk to you again. Thanks for coming on the bright side. So as you know, I'm a major fan, as is Eckhart Tolle, I might add, who has written a really cool little uh, comment about your book. 
Oh, an, if I can quote it, an eminently practical book and powerful pointer to the truth, unquote, and I agree 100%. So tell us a little bit, I know you have some new stuff coming out, or you, you're, you've been working on some new stuff, but tell us about the basics of your self-powerment model. Okay. The basics of the self-powerment model is that there is a way to be and a place to go inside of yourself in which you recognize the joy and the gift of having a life, and that um, it's not fraught with judgments or comparisons or worry or guilt or self-doubt or criticisms or comparisons. It's an experience that lets you know that this is a gift and Mm. that you have to look at it as the precious present. And you have to really get that you were given a gift when um, you became a human. Okay, so and that that say? Go ahead. I, I, I mean, you're saying so many things. I got tons of questions already. And you just okay, said like one, one sentence. So I, I'm sorry to interrupt. But I, it, okay. hold on to that thought. Uh, you said the, the joy of having a life. And I love that because yes. the fact that we even have a life, we take that for granted. And then we jump Absolutely. into our problems and we jump into all the stuff that's going on in our lives. But we forget that there's a joy just to having a life, just to being, yes. just to be alive, right? Yes, absolutely. No question. And that, that's the way that nature wanted us to be, uh, to be grateful and to be clear and to be um, just um, so expressive of the joy of having a life. Did you, and, ever, um, go ahead. Did you ever see the movie uh, uh, Fight Club? A long time ago. Okay, <laughs> remember when Brad Pitt puts a gun to this guy's head? And, and uh-huh. he threatens to kill him, and the guy begs him for his life, and, and Brad Pitt mm-hmm. is like cocks the, pulls the trigger back, and he's gonna, and he's gonna shoot him, and then and then he doesn't, and he lets him go, and they and Edward Norton asks Brad Pitt, he says, why did you do that? What are you crazy? And Brad Pitt goes, tomorrow morning when that guy has his Wheaties or has his breakfast, it's gonna mm-hmm. be the best cereal he ever tasted in his life, and, exactly. and it's kind of like nobody wants to die. We, we 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 bum out about our lives, but if push comes to shove and somebody says you're gonna die now, we would beg for our lives, no matter how bad they are. Yes. And, but also there's this wonderful program that I think is on Netflix that's called um, Beyond This Life, where it shows that people who um, flatline on their brain and flatline on their heart still are able to have a level of consciousness that, where they can experience what's happening to them, even though both their heart and their brain have flatlined. So it's an interesting concept of what is death and do we really die to the whole experience mm-hmm. and get eaten by, you know, by worms. I don't think that that happens, but it's a whole different discussion. Right yeah. now we're going to talk about life, not death. So, go, um, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. What, what, I, what I have been studying is that in order to get emotional health and well-being, the old paradigm has been that there are these psychological concepts like bipolar or depression or high anxiety or uh, sexual compulsive and that psychologists have defined these, giving, the, giving it various nomenclatures and various um, objective reality and signs that you can check off. And if you check off that, yes, then you're bipolar. If you check off this, then you're obsessive, et cetera, and so on. But what if all of that is an illusion? Mm. What if it doesn't have anything to do with psychological concepts at all? What if it has to do with a place that you can get to using a GPS, just like we do in our car, but... In, exactly the opposite. And in this place exists the mind being quiet, listening to the information from your body, because many, many, many species, sentient species, have that same capacity, which is they don't have uh, an acute development of the brain, and so their mind is quiet and they're listening all the time to the information from their body. Mm. And and that, that allows you to live the most natural way that you could possibly be. Did you see the movie Ben uh, um, that my octopus teacher? I is it a real is it a short one? I, I saw a, mo- a short one on octopus. I have a couple books books on octopuses. I th- no, oct- this is called my octopus teacher, and they're, a they're incredibly they're incredibly wise. These octopuses without a brain somehow. Incredibly, incredibly wise, and they have over the years find found ways because they don't have a hard shell over them to hide and deceive and and create alternative realities in terms of presentation of who they are. And this octopus gets in relationship to this diver, and they have a relationship for a whole year because the octopus only lives for a year. And 
the relationship that they have, the ability uh, to feel emotion and love and sadness and fear for the other person, it's just, it's, it's remarkable. It's how do remarkable. they show, how do they show the octopus feeling these emotions? Because the octopus will take all of its tentacles and wrap it around the man. <laughs> hug, and hug the man? <laughs> and hug the man. And the, oh and, and the man at the head of the... I mean, it's, it is a remarkable movie, and anybody listening to this should really watch it. Tell me the name but, again. Tell me the name again. My Octopus Teacher. I, yeah, I'm definitely going to look that up. I've been very fascinated with... Octopuses. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Or oct- octopi? <laughs> octopi, I think it is. Octopi. octopi. My, my yeah. octopus teacher. Yes. Okay, I'm definitely going to check that out. So, oh, shoot, we got we to gotta break. So I haven't heard you talk about this before, this idea of the body. Yeah, and I don't yes. think it's in your book. Is that is this the new stuff? Yeah, this is new that I have ideated about because I am so disappointed with the old paradigm um, of how psychology deals with talking right. about content. Hang, hang, hang on to that thought. we got to take a quick commercial break, okay? We'll be right back with Faye Mandel, her book Self-Empowerment, The Gateway to a New Way of Living More with Faye Mandel on the Bright Side right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Faye Mandel, her book Self-Empowerment, The Gateway to a New Way of Living. Uh, so, uh, Faye, I hadn't heard you talk about this idea of the body before, so can you elaborate a little bit on that? And then when, we get, when you're done with that, I want to talk to you about this idea of place. I love how you said that there's actually a place that we can yeah. go to. So if you can yeah. talk about the body a little bit and how, how that's involved with presence and, and getting back to the present moment and how that can help us deal in a self-powerment, self-powerment model kind of way. Okay. So uh, Joseph Campbell, in his book called The Inner Reaches of Outer Space, postulates that we are as vast from the skin inward as the universe mm. is from the skin and actually that we're a microcosm and a macrocosm. And so our body has the capacity, just like it has the capacity to heal a cut, it has the capacity to recalibrate us back to the present moment if we know how to use the body naturally. Uh, the problem is that most people have no idea how to listen to the body or how the body speaks or how to use it or how to um, follow in instructions. And so it just doesn't, and it, and it pays attention to thought. And when mm. you're thinking about a move in time, and therefore thought is always an abstraction, it's always based on memories, and it's always based on something in the past and projects into the future the information from the past. So it's like one of those little hamsters that go around and around uh-huh. and around and around. So, um, but the body's function is to, the reason why you have a body in the first place is to create the capacity to live at our maximum potential moment by moment by moment. And when the body is losing its focus or out of homeostasis, mm. which is the place where it is functioning at its maximum capacity, it gives us a signal. And that signal is a feeling. And that mm. feeling says, Various things. There are three basic feelings to let you know that you're at a homeostasis. Anxiety tells you that you're losing your focus. Frustration says you have to make a different choice. And sadness says you have to close the experience. And when you pay attention to these feelings, which is natural, they jumpstart the superior intelligence of the body and create the actions to recalibrate you back to the present moment. Now, hang, hang, on, is, hang on real quick. Sure. Anxiety, you said, uh, and hold on to that thought, I don't want you to lose that. Sadness was, a result of, uh, was related to closure. Uh, frustration was yep. related to a choice. And then what was anxiety? Yes. Anxiety was fear? It, it, no, anxiety is to recalibrate you back to the present moment. It's uh-huh. the most fundamental, important feeling that we have. And there are more women and more people on anti-anxiety drugs than any other drug in this country. So the culture has a stake in not letting us use our feelings to do what it's, what they're supposed to do naturally. Actually, wow. they judge as negative. Is that where the news comes in? This The That's stake that the culture has? Yeah. The, the news comes in. The magazines come in. The, um, you know, the, the uh, press releases, the books. All tell us that feelings are bad when feelings are the exact opposite. The culture's job is to keep us enslaved so that we do what they want wow. us to do rather than to listen to our bodies, which allow us to do what we want to do. So the culture has its own vested interest that is not in the person's interest, but we voluntarily participate. 
that's false. We have we don't we're good doobies and we want to do what you know is 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 uh, pleasing to the people that we care about, and so we follow their lead, and they you know they follow their their parents' lead and their parents' teachers' leads and whatever, and they bought into the cultural definitions of what is so. Wow, that sounds like a deep morass that we are in as as a culture. Very, very, very deep, and there's only one place. See, those uh, forms, those um, forms that tell us how to be from the culture are housed in our minds. So if we can quiet our minds, then we can begin to hear the body speak. Mm. It doesn't speak, but it speaks very loudly when the mind is quiet. So we want to be in that place. But once you enter that place, which is at the intersection of time and space, called the I am, am is a present tense a verb that lets you know you're in the now, and I is a pronoun that lets you know your attention is focused inward. So when you're in that place, then what comes along in that place is clarity, focus, information or pattern, um, uh, peace, joy, and a recognition ongoing of the gift for having a life. I it love that. In that place. I love that. Okay, so so like we only have about a f- f- like five minutes left here. So, um, pra- from a practical point of view, obviously people as not in not everybody, but as a culture, we're like in turmoil. We're in collective angst at this point, yeah. as you say, it's being perpetuated by forces that want us to be in that in that kind of state. How can we, right. in a simple way, in, in a in a just a practical and simple kind of step by step a protocol or, uh, or system, how can we get out of that? Well, that that's going to take a, a little bit more than five minutes, but I will give you this quote. Awareness of the limits of our knowledge is also awareness of the fact that what we, mo- what we know might be wrong or inexact. Hmm. Or by keeping in mind that our beliefs may be wrong, mm-hmm. then we be free ourselves, can we free ourselves from wrong ideas and learn? To learn, it is necessary to have the courage to accept that what we think we know, including our most rooted convictions, may be wrong or at least naive. And so the example that I give is that I spent seven years learning how to be a psychologist and learning about those psychological concepts and learning about talking about content, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. And then when I took my first quantum physics course and I realized that everything is relative, not absolute, I began to question and had to give up the very thing that I spent my life believing that I was going to use to create my purpose for the rest of my life. I had to give up the whole idea that talking about content is what makes people well on an emotional level. Wow. Now, what do you say to people who uh, believe there is absolute truth, like religious people, for example? Religion preaches that there is absolute truth. Well... For me, I believe that the basis of all religions is truth and love. It's only when you put it in some kind of form that you get this absolute, not, um, I don't want to say nonsense, but absolute conviction that, that if you wear a yarmulke or if you say the rosary or if you eat the body of Christ or if you pray seven times a day to the West, then you will be saved. Mm. Those are all forms of the basic underlying message of religion which is to speak truth and come from love does it it, does it get covered up or disguised in this all the different forms that you just explained because in the same kind of way that the culture wants us to do certain things to perpetuate the sense of fear and sense of obligation yep precisely the same way exactly wow so that's like one of their tools one of one of the culture's tools is religion Yes, well, yes, religion and the media and the news and, the, um, and, and everything that points outward to value. So that, for example, you know, we value a beautiful car or we value a beautiful house or we value a beautiful boat. The issue is, it's not that that's not, you know, we, we, we would like those kinds of things, but we don't need them. They're not important mm-hmm. to our well-being. They're not important to our sense of adequacy, our sense of purpose. Mm. You know, I'm not going to be foolish enough to say that, you know, those things aren't nice to have, but they are not necessary at all to live the most meaningful, perfect life. So in a micro sense, 
Uh, we have yep. values in, in, as individuals, and in a macro sense, life has value just because it is. Exactly right. That's well powerful. Said. Yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> that's powerful yeah. stuff. And so if we, can, if we can learn to tap into that value as the yes. stuff is going down, as the stuff is hitting the fan, we can, yes. we can become self-powered. That's exactly right. And we can proact rather than react. Wow. We don't let it get pulled into situations or into future worries or into past mm. guilt or into judgments. We choose where to put our attention. I love it. I love it. So why, just real quick, did, is there a reason why you call your book self-powerment rather than self-empowerment? Yes, because you can power yourself. You don't need anybody else or anything. You just need to know how to locate that space inside yourself in which all of these things exist naturally. That's awesome. That's the bright side message, by the way, Faye Mandel, yes. is that we can do things ourselves. Thank you so much. How do people get a hold of you or get a hold of your work? I mean, the book is awesome. I highly recommend people buy it. Any other ways? Yes. Any other? Yes, Real quick. They can go to the website, which is very important. It's called Being, B-E-I-N-G, dash present, P-R-E-S-E-N-T dot com. It has a 10-minute video of me actually doing the model, which are the steps to get to that place. And if anybody has any questions, they can call me at 401 578 9936. One more time. One more time for the phone number. 401-578-9936. Faye Mandel, thank you so much for being on the Bright Side. I'll talk to you real soon, okay, Faye? Have a great okay. day. <laughs> that was Faye Mandel, her book, Self-Powerment, website being-present.com, being-present.com. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you later, folks. Bye for now.